man. Ladies and gentlemen, nice one. Nice one. Nice one. Nice one. Welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Man on ground. Man on ground. Hakim K. Kazim. Hakim no Motosho. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Bringing you Man, man on, on Ground. ground. <laughs> <laughs> the idea for the film started with a picture. And it was the picture of Ernesto Nyahawe, the um, Mozambican man who was burnt alive during the 2008 xenophobic riots. And the first time I saw that picture, I was just shook to the core. We saw the issue beyond South Africa. We saw it more from a Pan-African point of view where there just seems to be a lot of self-destruction, a lot of hate on the continent, you know, and we felt even if it's xenophobia in South Africa, you know, you could call it by other names in different African countries, whether it's tribalism or religious bigotry, why are we self-hating? So the idea became to take all of that and make a film that was entertaining, that was a mystery, a social thriller, assemble the best possible cast, the best possible crew, and somehow bring all these elements together and make a film that we would all be proud of at the end of the day. When the genocide happened in Rwanda, I know a lot of us as Africans sat back afterwards and we said, well, what did we do as Africans? And I don't want to be in that number once again. We we're going to make the film in an organic way. So Fabian, Hakim and myself commissioned a lady to do some research into the riots and she interviewed people on both sides of the conflict. She went away for three months and came back with a, a whole stack of books, articles, interviews, and we let the story of the film come from the research. Man on Ground is a film about a man who comes to Johannesburg to give his brother a package from their mother. He hasn't had a real relationship with his brother, and this is an opportunity to reconnect. He discovers his brother has gone missing. Femi took this job in Extension 29. There have been violent protests there. I haven't heard from him. And the film takes place over one night as he tries to find out what happened to his brother. And like any good mystery, there are a lot of secrets, and he has to unravel who is keeping what from him. But he also gets a sense of the tension in the community. Like any producer will tell you, um, finance is always the main issue when you're trying to make a film. We went with the crowdfunding uh, approach, which was that we approached all our friends and their friends to give us little bits of donations. And I know it's a very utopian concept, but the idea of if you can work together, we can actually build pyramids. So that collective allowed us to get going. Do you phoned my agent for this? Yes. <laughs> behind, the <scenes. laughs> behind the scenes. Behind the scenes. I'm the first AD on this epic that we're making. I'm the art director slash wardrobe right. stylist. My role is just logistics and telling people what to do. I'm practicing the third rule of art department, Dan Boren still. I'm just still in dressing. <laughs> I'm quite a good skilled politician, yes. I know how to lie. The cast in general and the crew itself, they're all passionate and, and incredibly driven. Yeah, this is the first time these three characters are meeting. Tense, tense. Let's rehearse. Nice and quiet, ladies and germs. And action. And the fact that we got Fane in is phenomenal because he's one of South Africa's biggest underrated actors. Unusual building. We got lost. It's an old children's hospital. They converted it into an office. We just started construction recently. Hakim is crazy, um, but in this film, he was incredibly beautiful. 
I mean, there were fantastic profiles of him, and he's just his, his nature and his true essence. I mean, a lot of his other films that I've seen, he's very aggressive and hard-hitting, but this just so showed a beautiful, soft, fantastic side of him. There's no one on site, we checked. Well, we just resumed work today because of the protests. Lots of people are only coming in. What are you building? A police station. We're looking for my fiance. He works for you. My name is Zoto. And what are you playing in the show? I'm playing Zoto. <laughs> my name is Tishira. I play Zoto. Zoto finds love when she's least expecting it. And it's a beautiful, storybookish kind of love until he goes missing. His name is Femi. Lindy, I got him the job. That's my wife. She's also one of the underrated actors of South Africa. There was a lot of intensity. I do put what? Hi, no man. Lindy was a role was such a conflicted person. One of her many struggles was making the right decisions and almost choosing a side. If you because I'm telling you, I'm not putting your mouth to fame, I can now put. Really. The character I played, I think. Um, because I was part of the process of building that character up and, um, and understanding that character's backstory, it was easy for me to fall back on experiences to build up this particular character's profile. I'm Femi. What's your name? Zotua. Zotua. What does that mean? It means the only one. For me. The love scenes that he did with Tishi were, were beautiful. It was, it was, it was sexy. It was cute. It was romantic. The characters immediately came to life for me. The main thing was to try to, to try and get feel empathy for him, to get his point of view without being judgmental about it, and that kind of um, grew from there. Did you wait? Did you give him some time? Yeah. And everything was confirmed. It was great to see her in such a strong and, and centered role. Great actress. Um, I want to see more of her. What makes you think I forgot it? You're not going to open that, Ade. Why not? Because it's not yours to open. There was a time when, you know, we actually thought the production was going to shut down. We were expecting a particular company to, to give us some money, but they were delaying, and the film was in real danger of not being, of not being able to, to continue. Well, there was something in me that just told me, look, you know, we've started rolling camera, you know, and the camera's not gonna stop rolling until we finish this production. Fortunately, I phoned a guy by the name of AK Shavalala, and I'd phoned AK to ask him about this other guy, and AK somehow, in, in, in the way I was talking, he said, but, but what are you looking for? And I told AK the amount of money we were short. Could have been wishful thinking, but at that stage, I think um, the most important thing we knew that this film had to be made. And AK said, send me all your documents and I'll get back to you. And, you know, four hours later, AK phoned and said, we're in. I don't think any of the cast or crew knew how close we came to not, to not shooting the film. It's a very touchy subject, and I'm sure it's in everybody's uh, mind, if not the dinner tables. And I think if it's not in, in your dinner table, you have to put it in your dinner table, because that's where the discussion starts. Hatred, racism, that's where it starts, around dinner tables, as families. Hey, whatever my kore kore ana. Hey, whatever din tutena. Kids are listening. The whole process was, was, was crazy, but I think the one that stands out the most was the, the night that we blew up the car. It was just like, wow. It was like this flame. Shoo. We did that. We blew up a car. We cool. Missing <laughs> your training and boarding roll song. Camera at speed. And 
Action! Fire is the most recurring motif in the film, and the idea that we had to see fire. And everyone is dressed in black. And that way you have a stylistic consistency. But also, what I liked about it was that dressing in black also reflected the theme of the film. And then the idea of shadows. Paul Michelson, the DOP, and I worked very closely together discussing a lot of the films we liked that we wanted Man on Ground to look like. A lot of Hitchcock films, a lot of the noir films, so, so that style is what's in the film. <laughs> <laughs> Swimming in the river, that got me, it was icy cold, jeez. And um, they had to hold me under the water with sandbags. Um, felt ill afterwards, but funny enough, it was also quite fun. It was cold and we were shooting early mornings and late nights, and mostly late nights because a lot of the scenes were shot in the dark, so it was very cold. But I think that cold also just added to the mood of the film. It helped, uh, it helped keep us on our toes. There's nothing like working on a film that everyone seems to be passionate about and they're doing it basically because they want to make that particular film happen. I think it's a lot different from people working because they just want to get paid at the end of the day or at the end of the week. Um, from the actors to the crew to the catering, you know, it was really, when people say, you yeah, know, we're really one nice, happy family on set, you know, if you haven't really been part of a production like that, you really think they're just talking, you know, crap. But really, it's an amazing experience. Thank you very much for a lovely shoot. It's a picture wrap. Join us for a toast. Join us for a toast, please. <laughs> yes! It's a wrap. Thank you, guys. One of the greatest days, I think, in the history of the film was the day we got into the Toronto Film Festival. I was with some friends and my, my phone sort of, you know, vibrated and the, and the headline was like, great news. And I remember like screaming out and I phoned Hakeem and I phoned Fabian. I think Fabian was on a plane to go and where he was going to, but he, I think he, he burst out, he burst out screaming on the plane. Once we got into the Toronto Film Festival, we needed to look for more money to finish the film. The money we had got from the crowdfunding and from Chris Dawn Productions allowed us to finish shooting the film. Uh, the post-production, however, required a bit more funds. We applied to the National Film and Video Foundation. They came on board, the Gauteng Film Commission and the International Organization for Migration. All these bodies made it possible for the film to be ready for the world. The fact that we got into Toronto was phenomenal and seeing the film on that big screen and getting the acknowledgement and talking to other people about what we did and when people were actually thanking, for, for thanking us for the story that we told and in the manner it was told was overwhelming. I wasn't surprised at the response and what people had to say about the film. I mean the subject matter of the film is, is quite intense and it's raw. South Africa is such an interesting place in terms of this always a headline story happening all the time. Very shocking stories as well. And I think the film captured that, but on a human level, rather than a sensationalist kind of, kind of way. And I think people related to that. The film doesn't necessarily seek to give you answers. The film presents um, the complexity of the situation. And I don't, think that, I don't think that you can find the answers in any film. I think that films exist, or at least the type of films that I like, are the films that question the knowledge. It is highly important for Africans to tell their own stories because I think for centuries, our stories have not been told by us or they haven't been told from our perspective. And um, I think we're perhaps one of the few um, 
a few people in the world who, if you look at all the history books, you know, uh, about Africa, very few of them have been written by Africans or told from a truly African African perspective and African understanding. It's a message that needs to be told. Violence and war is just taken over everyday life and we need, we need to get back to, to humanity and to everyday type of living and love and compassion for the next person. We need to stop discriminating against each other. The film has continued to travel, it's continued to touch people. I've always been, I've, I've been really touched that from an event of coming from that picture, bringing a team together that included Hakeem, Rosie, Fabian and myself, the talented cast, the wonderful crew. It's truly one of the most humbling and it's been one of the most gratifying experiences of my life. South Africa, What's going on? They're talking about riots on the radio. It means missing. If I were you, I'd get out of here. There are three sides to every story. His, mine, and the truth. If anybody knows what happened to Femi, it's her. You ever have a secret hunch of how you will die? lost.